Now, what I've given you here, like this is the concise version. The question itself, if you have a look at the papers, you've got it there, if you brought it with you, um, it gives you some clues and some hints which make the question longer, okay? So for part one, what they say is to get this, their clue for you is go back to first principles. That's a good clue, okay? So first principles, let's just remember, it looks like this. You've still got the same limit up there. Now you've got a fraction, it's rise over run, recite it with me. What is the first <laughs> principles fraction? F of x plus h minus f of x all over h. There you go, rise over run. Okay. Now, then you have to get to this. Okay. So clearly you can see there's an e involved, right? You have to work out what um, the derivative for e is. At zero, you see that if I make x equals zero, right, that's going to make this eliminate, and you'll see what's going to happen. Okay, so let's consider for let f of x equal e to the x. Okay, let's just do it from first principles. Okay, so f dash will equal uh, the limit as h approaches zero of, and you get this. No drama so far. Okay, now by the way, one of the reasons why this doesn't tend to appear in like your earlier limits questions is because unlike say a polynomial uh, or even something with a square root in it, right? It's it's difficult to how do you resolve this? How do you how do you cancel that h on the bottom? There's no simple algebraic tricks you can use to do that. Okay. So instead, we're going to appeal to this. We want to say, well, how about this particular value, right? You put in zero, right? This is going to get us up to here. Okay. So at x equals zero, right? This is going to be e to the h. This will be e to the zero, which is one. Okay, so you get to this, right? Now, then you think, okay, well, that's the right-hand side done, right? But I don't know, like, this is what I'm trying to find out, right? So being that there's nothing algebraic for you can do, right? You sort of hit the end of the line. Where else could you look in order to get a value for this? And I'm very deliberately telling you, like, from this point, like, there's, there's, there's no more, you can't do anything to that, okay? So you must take another path. What other paths are open to you? So, when you hit a dead end, right, well, we, the natural thing is turn around and look back and see what you've got here. And I think the most important thing is remember, what is this function? It's e to the x. Right? And we're considering the derivative of this, of this function at a particular point. But, but you know what the derivative of e to the x is, right? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, right? That's f dash, right? So therefore, f dash 0 should be this with x equals 0, right? Which is, which is 1. Okay. So this is just like how we approach that, um, that proof of the binomial theorem, right? You're like, you do something and you get to one point, okay? It's like, well, can I get to this through another way? And the answer is yes, you can, okay? So therefore, um, this thing, this limit, right, f dash zero, that's equal to one. There you go, there's your answer. Not that hard. 